Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to seven player expansion for Scythe, The Wind Gambit. This was designed by Kai Stark and Jamie Stegmeier and published by Stonemeyer Games. If you'd like to learn how to play the original game, we have a full tutorial for that, and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. But this expansion is going to add two new modules to the base game, both airships and resolutions. So let's go to the table, and I'll show you how they work. Normally, a game of Scythe will end immediately after a player puts their sixth star into play. But with the optional resolution module, you'll shuffle these tiles randomly, selecting one to place face up near this triumph track. This new resolution is then read aloud and will be the new end game condition for all of the players. For example, this is Mission Possible, and it says that during the setup, you'll reveal two objectives and place them here. These are public objectives, meaning that any player can complete either or both of them, and then also place stars here as you do. Keep in mind any number of players can complete these, though at most one time each. This then says that after a player has placed their sixth star, each other player takes one final turn, but may not move units. Although players may not place more than six stars, with this endgame condition, it is possible that multiple players could put out six stars before the game ends. And that's just one endgame condition of the eight that are provided. And players are also free to simply choose the one that they want to use, rather than pick randomly. With that understood, now let's learn about the airship module. For this, each player will claim an airship in their faction's color and place it on their home base during the setup. Now keep in mind, I won't be fully setting up a game of Scythe here, I'll just be showing the components necessary to explain the new rules. You'll now shuffle the two airship decks separately, distinguishing them by their backs. And I should point out, in case it's not obvious, that these, like the resolution tiles, are not cards, but they're actual thick boards. You'll now reveal one red and one green tile, and these will detail both the passive and aggressive attributes of all the airships that the game will have. The leftover tiles can then be returned to the box. So again, just to be clear, all airships in the game will share these exact same attributes. To move an airship, like any unit, you select the move action and then choose the airship as one of the units moving. And the distance it can travel is equal to the range showing on its passive card in the upper right hand corner here. So it could move up to two hexes in this case. But remember, inside moving zero spaces is not an option in a move action, so this could move one or two hexes. If you're moving an airship using factory movement, instead add one extra space of movement to its normal amount. So in this case, the airship could move up to three hexes in total. Airships do have some other special rules as well. First of all, as we just saw, they can freely move over rivers and into lakes. They can also go into and out of territories with enemy units. Entering an enemy territory does not force an airship to stop, even if it contains another airship. That said, like other units, an airship may not move onto its own or an opponent's home base. And it's also important to realize that these cannot initiate combat on their own. In other words, even though it's moved into a territory with enemy workers, these will not be scared off. It also can initiate combat by moving into this territory with an airship or with other enemy units. In the same way, those enemy units cannot initiate combat with the airship. Now that said, it might be in a territory when a fight would break out. But if so, they do not increase the number of combat cards that a player would be able to use in that fight. If you have the invaders from a far expansion, you should also be aware that airships will not trigger traps. They also can't move through tunnels and or mines, and the abilities of your unlocked mechs do not apply to them, since they are not mechs or characters themselves. Now that said, they will have their own unique abilities as printed on both of their tiles, so keep those in mind. For example, in this combination, the passive ability says that when you produce on a location where your airship is present, you'll produce one extra of that resource. And on the aggressive tile, it says that opponents may not move their characters or mechs out of your airship's territory unless they pay you one dollar for each unit moved. Remember, there are eight different passive and aggressive tiles, so a variety of combinations can be created each time you play. And while I said that airships don't actively cause combat themselves, that can change if their special ability allows it, like you'd find on this Blitzkrieg aggressive tile. 
It's also important to realize that airships never control the territories that they are in. You would still need other pieces in that space to control it. So if you had an airship in a territory alone with resources on the ground, you do not own them and they can't be spent by you. That said, on every aggressive tile, you'll find this ship either has the ability to transport up to two workers or three resources of any type. Picking up or dropping them off happens before, during, or after movement as part of a move action, and the resources or workers can be put into the ship during the movement like this. If you're carrying resources, they are under your control while in the airship, which means that you can also spend them. If your airship allows you to transport workers instead, they cannot bring resources with them. Also, they can't produce or trade from here. And they don't allow you to control a territory from within the airship. You'd still need some units on the ground. Also, when dropping workers off, the space can't contain any opponents. For the purposes of scoring, remember, an airship in a territory alone cannot control it. But you can count any resources that it's holding at that time. As we wrap up, I should mention that as an advanced variant, players can choose to draw their own random aggressive and passive tile combinations that will affect their airship only. But this is not necessarily advised in games of four or more players, as it's a lot of information to keep track of, so choose to use that variant wisely. The back of the rulebook also includes some errata and other variants that you can try. And there's also Otama rules and cards for using airships in solo play, along with a new achievement sheet. But I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. That said, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.